Hi, my name is Brian Capo, and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. And this week I'm going to discuss using Base R Graphics versus ggplot2. So this is apparently a highly controversial subject, and I came to it through some blog posts. Um, most notably, uh, Jeff Leakes, I'll show it here, Jeff Leakes um, blog post that says why I don't use ggplot2. He goes through several arguments. Um, then another good one that you should read is David Robinson wrote a reply called Why I Use ggplot2. Uh, Nathan Yao got in on it, comparing ggplot2 and base R graphics. Uh, the discussion of Jeff Leake's article on Hacker News is actually pretty informative. The, um, this uh, blog post by Nima Hijazi, ggplot versus base. Uh, Amanda Mejia, who's a postdoc, or who's a, who was a student here, um, gives 10 reasons to, sw uh, to switch to ggplot2. Um, this uh, um, kind of bulleted list by McKellen Klemp, uh, McClellan Kemp is very useful as well. Um, I'm going to give uh, my rationale for why you should use ggplot2 versus base R, uh, but I think to do so I have to classify people into different archetypes. So, of course, if you're an R guru and you already know both, then who cares, right? Like, make your own decision. So, kind of the more interesting cases are if you know a lot of R and you know base R very well, should you then go to the extra effort of learning ggplot2? Well, the first question is, are you the kind of person who roots your phone on the weekend, right? You know, if you do that, then probably no one's going to stop you from learning ggplot2 because this is how you spend your time learning new technology related stuff. Um, if not, if you're an R, you know, if you're kind of a base R guru and you already work really well with it, then really there isn't going to be a ton of benefit to learning ggplot2 for you because you're not just learning a new plotting system, you're kind of learning a new workflow. And I think that's ultimately what Jeff Leake's point was. He, he talks about how he generates exploratory graphs very quickly, you know, sort of how, how base R fits into his workflow. And he knows R really well, and he kind of developed his R skills before ggplot2 was really finished or maybe even before it was started. So, at, you know, so I think for him, it's, it's just a very different calculus of, you know, do I want to devote my time and energy to learning this extra plotting system when I'm already super highly proficient in this other one. If you know ggplot2 quite well and you want to know whether or not you should learn some base R, well, the first thing I would ask is, are you going to be some kind of software developer um, or something like that in R? Are you going to write a lot of R packages? If you are, then probably it's worth knowing some base R. Uh, on top of knowing ggplot2. On the other hand, if you're the kind of person who knows ggplot2 well, and I, I would say there's this second component. It's not just knowing ggplot2. If you've kind of bought into the tidyverse, right? You use dplyr a lot for your data manipulation and so on, right? You've kind of organized your your data into the, the kind of data frame centric way of thinking that the tidyverse represents. If that's the case, then there really isn't much benefit to adding base R on top of it because it's not really working into your system. So now let me talk about people who, who don't have either base R or ggplot knowledge starting out. And the question is, what should they devote their energy to? And of course, this still, I think, depends on what kind of person you are. If you have a lot of sort of highly idiosyncratic use of R that, that you need because you exist in some subdomain, some technological subdomain that has weird data structures. Like, for example, you work in neuroimaging and everything is really arrays and, you know, working with files and raster graphics, then probably you're going to only be able to fill that need with base R. Uh, because, you know, I think, like I mentioned previously, ggplot2, you're, you're trying to buy into the whole system, the whole tidyverse system. Uh, and I think in that case it works the best, but if you have lots of you know, raster images that you have to work with and heat maps and things like that, yeah, yeah you could probably do it with ggplot2, but why you're probably better off doing that with base R. On the other hand, if you're, if you're coming at R and you're, most of your needs are going to be kind of standard data analysis, then I would say definitely just use ggplot2. 
um, I liken it to if you were new to typesetting, you might as well just learn LaTeX instead of learning tech, right? LaTeX is the nice macro system built on top of tech. And yes, technically, everything you can do in LaTeX, you can do in tech because te you know LaTeX is a macro system written on top of tech. However, something about the reduction in choices and simplification that is represented by LaTeX makes it even more expressive, even though you have kind of fewer choices. And I think to some extent that is true of ggplot. Um, for me personally, I have kind of two use cases. I have my sort of research stuff where I'm programming and I'm working on these kind of complex data structures like in neuroimaging. And there I use base R almost exclusively. Um, but then there's the second set of things where I'm doing more ordinary sort of data analysis. And then I, in that setting, I've mostly bought into the sort of uh, tidyverse way of thinking. I, and, and I find it very useful for me. And in that case, when I've set my data up as a data frame and I've really taken the energy and time to like restructure everything as a data frame, then I, I kind of buy into the whole system. I use, you know, instead of having a, a, a file, uh, a standard .r file, I have an R markdown file that I'm working from or, or more recently one of the notebooks that they've developed in R Studio. And I, I'm using ggplot and I'm and I'm using dplyr and these sorts of things. So, so when I'm doing kind of more standard data analysis, I like all those tools. And there's something about the collection of restrictions and, um, you know, and an effort that I'm putting into restructuring my data that really helps. And it, as a benefit, the, you know, the ggplot graphics look pretty nice out of the box. And yes, if I need some publication ready graphics, it takes a lot of extra effort and probably an equivalent amount of effort as if I had just done it in base R. But what I'm kind of more buying into is the whole system. Okay, so that's my thoughts on this. If you, um, if you get a moment, please subscribe. We'll have one of these videos approximately every week. And uh, if you get a chance, subscribe to the newsletter as well. All right, thanks a lot and I'll see you next week.